Welcome back to DXB. Today it's the first day of COP28 and we are having ourselves a little bit of a celebration DXB today styly. So let's get an insight on what's going on up at the COP site now because with all of the talk building up to the opening day uh, there's been plenty of anticipation but what can we take away from it? Let's talk now uh, to the strategy and guest experience lead the UAE House of Sustainability right in the heart of the COP28 campus the old Expo 2020 campus Mira Abdullah Almatuero joins us now live here uh, from our position. Um, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I suppose the, the first question has to be, how is it up there at the moment? <laughs> it's very exciting. It's buzzing with life and we can't wait to have you on very soon. <laughs> I mean, a lot of our uh, viewers will, of course, have an understanding of the site because a lot of them went to Expo 2020. Yeah. They would have watched us there. They would have, uh, have come down and celebrated. How different does the COP28 site look from the Expo site? I mean, the main structures are, you know, pretty much the same. However, you will see uh, country pavilions this time. You will see two zones. Uh, so the the way the COP operates, uh, there is a blue and a green zone. So I guess the way it's uh, segmented at the moment is a little bit different. Uh, but you will have to come to, to check it out yourself. We'll be there. <laughs> I actually am quite interested. I think a lot of people are interested about the difference between the blue zone and the difference between the green zone. And I yeah. think a lot of us can imagine the expo site in our heads. Yeah. Can you sort of tell us a brief overview of where the green zone and blue zones are. Yeah, so the blue zone is uh, mainly where the DEC halls are um, and for the first three days of COP um, the Wassel Plaza also will be part of the blue zone and then it's going to uh, switch over to the green zone and then the green zone is kind of a large area and it's um, the rest of the uh, expo site and um, I'm here actually representing the UAE pavilions and we actually have a pavilion in the green zone as well as uh, one in the blue zone uh, that we can talk to you a little bit more about. And me the metro obviously is still the best way to come to Expo City all the time, right? I think so, yes. So we're encouraging people to use, uh, you know, public transport as much as possible and, uh, yeah, minimize kind of vehicles. So, yeah. And what can people expect from the UAE Pavilion? Because now I know that you guys have changed the name as well. Yes. So can you please tell us more about that? Yes, of course. So, the, so as I mentioned, there are two pavilions. So the UAE House of Sustainability is the UAE Pavilion that is in the green zone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, the purpose of this pavilion is really to share uh, our sustainability journey as a nation. And so you will see um, interactive experiences across three main areas, the sustainability oasis, uh, our journey of collective progress, and our future of sustainable flourishing. And so it's really all about the past, present, and future of the UAE's net zero commitments and sustainability targets inshallah yeah, that's really nice. yeah and then you know the blue zone pavilion is um, pretty much you know we're all grounded obviously in the same story so we all talk about uh, our past and kind of this history of collective progress that we had as a nation uh, and then you know the our first 50 years which was an era of remarkable human development. You know, we, uh, we, we were blessed with resources, but also the wise stewardship uh, of our leadership and, uh, you know, the, their, their focus on human development. And, you know, we've seen a huge development in the nation in our first 50 years. And, you know, now we're looking into our next transformation, which is uh, our transformation towards a future of sustainable flourishing. And you will see that beats up the story uh, in both of our pavilions. Mm. And who do you think from your experience of of having worked at, at Expo and and now with the um, the sustain House of Sustainability, yeah. um, do you think it'll be the children who are leading their parents there, or um, is it very much a place for in more intergenerational conversation? Yeah. What are the bits that you're the most excited about? Yeah, no, that's a beautiful question. So because of um, you know the the way COP is so. The Blue Zone Pavilion is usually for people who are, in general, the Blue Zone is for people who are accredited by the UN. And so that's where you'll see the, you know, the climate leaders, um, you know, the the, peop the experts, etc. The negotiators. Exactly. Yeah. The negotiators, uh, you know, people who are accredited to, to be able to access that site. And so uh, that's why intentionally the UAE House of Sustainability was the one that we have uh, targeted for all of the audiences. We want it to be, you know, where the families can come and for people who are climate curious 
process. You don't have to be an expert. We would love actually to inspire you uh, to really co-create climate solutions with us uh, by looking at kind of the huge milestones of the UAE and also meeting different people. There'll be like the whole world is going to come uh, for, for COP28. So we would love for that to be an opportunity where there's prompts and questions and you can start thinking of what are some small changes you can apply into your life or big ideas that we can all co-create together. So the question was beautiful. Mine's not so beautiful. OK, but it is practical nonetheless. Because I remember Expo and one of the big things of Expo was the food uh, and people could come and they could try different tastes from around the world as well. Is there a same sort of element for people to come up? If they're coming up with a family for the day, etc. Are there food options available to everybody so you can make a day of it? Absolutely. So, mashallah, uh, you know, the food scene in the UAE is always incredible and uh, on COP site, of course, as well. Uh, however, uh, given that it is a climate conference, we've been very conscious about the type of catering that yeah. will happen on site. And so it does have to meet sustainability credentials. You know, it is uh, an ISO certified event. And so there are important uh, elements that uh, the caterers had to put in mind in terms of the their sourcing of their products and also the diversity yeah. of what is available to, to all the guests that will be with us. I think there's a big push, isn't there, for um, uh, to encourage people to try more plant-based foods. Yeah. And I love um, having a look um, in between where we are at the Al Fosan Park with the, the Extreme Hangout. We're very close to you, and in between us is the wonderful Expo City Farm, which seems to have sprung up. And it's great; they're growing tomato plants and aubergines and all kinds of things. And they've got a vertical farm as well, so that people can go and experience that too. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, in our pavilion as well, by the way, uh, inshallah, when you will all visit, we're waiting for you all. Uh, we have an experience that is uh, an AI-generated um, experience. It's called Dinner in 2050, uh, where you'll be encouraged to uh, really think of how might your plate look differently in 2050. What does a low-carbon diet look like? Mm. And when you mentioned uh, plant-based, uh, you will see how we, through the AI, we ask you to say what your favorite meal is, uh, and it will replace a few of the ingredients in there to make it a little bit more kind of, you know, more climate conscious. And so you may have a burger, for example, if you say your favorite is a, a beef burger, you might get a salicornia burger. It's literally made from a salt-loving plant that is abundant in the UAE. It grows with, uh, you can you know, water it with saline uh, water uh, and it's and it's there. So that's one of the experiences, inshallah, that you'll see with us. <laughs> that's a great COP is going to be filled with so many things and we can't wait to be visiting the UAE Pavilion as well and COP28 as a whole. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. On today's spotlight, we have got a founder of a tea brand that delivers a unique tea experience described by many as beyond indulgence, new, natural, sustainable and plenty in flavor. She curates an experience that is is nurturing through her products. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Asta. I'm the founder of Sia. Sia stands for Abundance and Plentiful. We are in the business of delivering one of the most indulgent experiences with our specialty teas and teaware. The gap that Sia is addressing is lack of speciality tea retailers in this market. So tea as a product has two different types of segments. One is the mass tea producers where your kadak, chamomile, jasmine green tea all falls. We are not that. We are speciality tea retailers. We are specifically targeting the flavor adventurist, the wellness seekers who appreciate the quality of tea. They can distinguish the quality of their, their tea when they sip the tea. And that's what our target segment is. And we are addressing the gap of uh, available speciality tea retailers in this market. Major milestones of Sia so far has been launching this brand with a 15 month old baby and standing here in front of you today interviewing. But yes, one of the major milestones has been an overwhelming, a pleasantly overwhelming response of the brand just in this festive season where we went out of stock. It was unexpected, it was pleasantly overwhelming and it was a far-fetched dream that came true. My long-term goal for my business is to make Sia synonymous to premium teas, like internet searches is to Google. Dubai is home for me. 
Um, I have I have studied here. I have friends here. I have family here. I've had a baby here, and I've launched my brand here. So it's pretty much a home. A lot of projects happening in Dubai currently. COP28 is coming up, uh, a lot of fairs are happening, but I'm particularly excited about Gulf Food 2024. So, a little bit more insight into all things COP28. Time now, though, for today's Roundup. Faris, what's the buzz? I will tell you what the buzz is, and that is that King Charles is going to be attending COP28 opening ceremony in Dubai with the opening speech. He's going to address the world leaders at the opening ceremony on December the 1st. He's going to take the opportunity to have meetings with regional le leaders, as well as taking part in forums as a strategic partner with leaders around the world. What do we think about King Charles as the person who's going to come and have a speech at the opening? You're happy about it, Amber? I'm super happy about it. <laughs> he has been walking the environmental walk and talking the environmental talk for decades, literally pretty much longer than anybody else has. Um, he is a wise voice um, and uh, just He's super in touch with all of it as well. He seems to live it, whether it's in his garden, talking to his plants, which he infamously does. Um, but being a global statesman as well, he can hold the attention of the other leaders around the world. Um, and I hope really inspire them to take the action we need them to take. I couldn't, I couldn't help but smile a little bit at the irony of the, of, of the announcement when it, when it was made, because obviously delegations like to send their, their, their heads of government, their heads of state, the decision makers, if you like, um, and there was that sort of thing from the British government saying, unfortunately, Rishi Sunak is unable to make it to COP28. But don't you worry, King Charles is coming anyway. It's like, oh, wow, OK, so, uh, yeah, we'll take that. That'd be brilliant. And, and to your point as well, uh, for the extraordinary work he's doing down uh, in his uh, home down in Gloucestershire, but also on the estate and the, mm. the produce they're growing, the initiatives they're involved in. He's been a lifelong campaigner. And it's great to see him get this sort of opportunity on the world stage as King Charles. Exactly. I mean, I'm even thinking back to one of my favorite childhood films, uh, which is about, it's a cartoon about a man who decides to build a little homestead somewhere in nature, and he actually ruins the lives of the little elves that actually live in the ground. And it's narrated by King Charles, <laughs> Prince Charles at the time. Like, so this is not a new thing. He's no. always been very big on the sustainability aspect. Yeah. He would be a, a crowd puller, that's for sure. I expect to have him here in the UAE. <laughs> yeah, and it's great because COP is going to be having world leaders from everywhere coming in and decision makers to make a change during COP28 here in Dubai. Roads are going to be fun, aren't they? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Take the metro when you're going is to there COP28. Any big surprise that's the that best way to get there. People are being encouraged to work from home, learn from home, <laughs> uh, and do lots of things from home this coming yes. Friday. Look, lots to look forward to. All right, let's take a break, shall we? Catch our breath. After the break, we get the insights on the surprising demand for sustainable transportation right here in the region. Plus, we've got a talented band closing the night out for us, so stay tuned for more. 